In this video, I'll teach you how to use Elementor's nested tab widget. Hey guys, what's up? This is Michaela from Simplifying Websites. And before I get into the tutorial, I'm going to ask you to like this video and subscribe to the channel, okay? Well guys, for a few months now, Elementor has been updating several of its widgets and giving them the option of being nested. Nested widgets, what are they? They're widgets where you can create things inside tabs. And there were several widgets that came with this update. I've already taught some here, I've taught carousel, I've taught menu, I've taught some. And now I'm making a specific video about the tab widget. For you to have access to this feature, you need to have Elementor Pro up to date. Okay, it's an Elementor Pro feature, you need to have Elementor Pro up to date and you need to come here to Elementor settings. Here in the resources tab and you need to have this option active nested elements. Okay, it's a flexbox container setting too. Flexible container, flexbox, which is the new Elementor technology. If you're not using flexbox container, it's really worth watching. There's a video here on the channel showing you how to use it because it's totally changed the way we create websites, okay? So if you're clicking here and you're not seeing these little arrows here to one side or the other, it's because you don't have Flexbox active, you're using the old version, which is sections and columns. Then you also need to activate the Flexbox container and the nested widget. Then you come down here and click save. Once you've saved, you'll come to the library and get the tabs widget. Take a look. Is the same widget we used before similar to this accordion one, which we use for the FAQ, for example, similar to this one, except that this one allows us to create tabs here and create whatever we want within each tab. You can even create an entire website within each tab and separate it by tabs. And then I'll even give you an example here of a template we can make. So for example, I'm here on this landing page which is a sales page that I taught you how to create on the channel. I'll leave a video here if you want to go and learn. And you can see that there's a section here for modules, which is where you put the content of the course. Sometimes you'll have a lot of modules or the client will have a lot of modules on their course page. And sometimes it gets too long, too big for the client to see. And then you can separate them with these tabs. That's what I'm going to do here to show you. So I'm going to go back to the library, I'm going to take the tab widget, I'm going to drag it down here and here inside each tab we can build something. To be able to change the name of each tab you'll come here then you can change the title. I'm going to put the first title of techniques, the second for products and the third business model. I think that in this scenario here would be a good method of separation because here in this course, theoretically, the person is teaching how to do nail extensions. So here I would put the modules related to techniques which have various techniques that can be taught. In this other one, the product related ones, how to handle the product, how to use the products. And in this one, the business model, which should certainly teach social media management, how much to charge, that sort of thing. So they're well divided into topics. I'll give you some tips. You can configure each one individually. So for example, what I do in one of these, I can configure individually in the others. So let's say I want to add a background color to this one. I'll come here to style type of background. I'll take this purple color I have here. I'll come here to advanced, I'll come to padding, I'll put padding and I'll add a few things. I can put a title, some text, I can do that. And then in this other tab, I'll come and make the same settings. But if I use similar settings, I can save a bit of time. So I can, for example, let me go back to the settings here. For example, in this one, I want have 30 padding. So I'm going to come to this container. I'm going to put 30 padding. I want the background to be white. So I'll come here. I'll put white and I'll put the cards in. So I can come here, get an icon box. Drag it here. I can come here to the container, come here to layout, configure it so that it's horizontal. Then I can duplicate the widgets here, see? I wanted to break the line so that there are only three columns. I have two options. I can come here to each of the cards and make the settings, or I can activate the grid. 
For those who don't know, the container grid is a new option too. You come here to settings, activate the grid container option, and then it's available to you in any of the containers you go to, there will always be this option, Flexbox or Grid. Flexbox, you configure it individually. Grid, everything is already configured for you. So, I'll put it here in Grid, and by default it comes with three columns and two rows. This is it. Then you decide how many columns and rows you want. So I'm going to leave it at two rows and three columns, which is what I wanted. And then you don't need to configure the spacing of the widgets. You just duplicate it and it'll look like this. Okay? But let's suppose you want to split this screen even further, shall we? So let's say you want to do it like this. On one side you put the cards, on the other you go to a text, something. You can come and add a container inside that container. So I come here to the library, drag a container in, then I click on it, duplicate it, then I come to this outside container, leave it aligned here horizontally so that they're next to each other. Let me put some spacing in this outside container. There's a container here and one here. Then in this one I can come and put the cards in, right? So let's say I want two here per line. Then I only set up the grid in this one. I come here to it, I come to Flexbox, I set the grid, and that's what I set. Two rows, two columns. And then, in this other one, I want to put, for example, a title and a text. And then I can delimit it any way I want. So I can delimit the background container here. I can come here in the style, for example, if I'm going to delimit it with color put a little background color or I can delimit each of the cards so for example in this one I'm just going to leave a little background color and in this one I'm going to put a different color in this container here I'll come and put purple for example if I want to put spacing only in this container here I can too see here so it's all customizable for you just as if you were creating anything in Elementor, it's just going to be divisible by tabs. Okay? So, I'm going to do it the way I showed you, the way I said we were going to do it, with these little cards. So, I'm going to come here, I'm going to change the color to white. I'm going to take the icon box. Drag it here. I'm going to come here in the main container, change it to a grid, because I just want to put the little cards. I'm going to change it to a grid. It already comes with the settings I want, which are two rows and three columns. It will look like this. I can come here and configure the little cards. I can even take the configuration from this one, which is already standard, and paste it here. Then the card will be here the way I want it. So, just to be able to differentiate for you, I'm going to do it like this. Some I'll leave like this, and others I'll leave in a different color. So, I'll leave it like this. Then, what I was telling you is that you can come here and enjoy it. So, for example, as I want to do the same thing on all three tabs, right? Leave cards, I can exclude the other tabs, leave just one and duplicate it. Then it duplicates everything, it duplicates all the settings, I don't need to repeat it. Then I can just come here and change the titles. So, I'm going to come to this first one and do the same thing as before, which is techniques, products and business model. That's it. Then I have the three tabs here, all configured the same way. Then if I want, I can just change them. I'll change it here so you can tell the difference. And here on this tab, I'll put it like this. Now it's more different, you can see. The first one is like this. The second one is like this, and the third one is like this. In each one, you come and make the adjustments you want. I've already made the layout here different from the way I wanted it to be for you. And there's also the part about the tabs, you can change that here too. So you can come here towards the top, you can choose whether you want to leave the tabs here at the top. If you want to leave them at the bottom, they look like this. Or if you want them on the right, on this side, or on the left, on this side here, like a menu, 
And also, if you want them aligned downwards, stretched out, so they take up all the space on the screen, centered, aligned upwards. So here you can configure the way you want them here. And you can also align the titles here, center, left, right. You can also come here to style and make all the style settings there. So if you want it rounded, you can put rounded. If you want to make it smaller, if you want to make it narrower, you can do that too. If you want to make it wider, just set it up here using padding. So for example, I've unlinked the values here. I'm going to put 30 padding on the left, 30 padding on the right. Then it's flatter. You can add a shadow. You can change the color here. There's the normal color, which is when nothing is happening. There's the hover color, which is the action of hovering the mouse. You can come here and change the color. And there's the active color, which is the one that is active when you are on the specific page. You can go here and change all of these. There's a shadow, there's typography. You can change the space between the tabs. You can also change the distance between the tab and the content. And these are the title settings. You can also configure normal, hover, and active. The icon setting because I haven't shown it here, but you can add the icon. So if you want to add an icon to each of them, you can. You can add an icon or you can add a photo too. You can also add an SVG icon if you want to upload it, which is a personalized icon. And then if you want to upload a photo, you have to save it in SVG mode so you can put it here, okay? So you can change these icons via the icon tab here. You can place them to one side, the other, below or above the title. It's like that 100% customizable. It looks really, really nice. And you can also customize the color. So for example, if you want the mouse over to show only the purple icon, it does. You hover the mouse and you get the pink background that we've set up and just the purple icon there. You can configure all this here in these tabs. And the standard settings for any widget, right? Go to advanced and you'll find the default settings. And it's also fully customizable via mobile. So you put it here on your cell phone and then everything you do, you just change it for your cell phone. So that's it, folks. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, leave a like here on the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media. Cheers. See you next time. Bye.